So today we're going to have a quick look at the setup needed for NetApp's new HCI platform. Uh, we're going to run through some of the steps, some of the phases and some of the things we've learned from setting it up. Yes, we've learned lots uh, from running through the process of setting it up. It's, uh, it's actually been quite fun. Yes, I agree. I've enjoyed it, you know. Again, as always, it's very easy to work with, uh, as most all of NetApp's uh, products in their portfolio. Very straightforward and easy, well documented. So yeah, we're ready to go. It was just nice because I've been off the tools so long to actually get a bit of hands-on experience with yes, something for a change. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, me as well. I've uh, been off the tools for a, not as long as you, but <laughs> uh, long enough to forget certain things that uh, you'd normally remember. So. Yeah, which is good. So um, you can see the video running in the background. One of the first things is to make sure that once they've got an IP address that you browse to the right node. Yeah. Um, it has to be a storage node for the NDE engine. It's not on the compute nodes uh, as yet, um, which is something we were discussing earlier. We said that um, hopefully in the future that is, is something that's amended either for ease of customer deployments or for um, addition of extra compute nodes at a later date. Yeah, yeah, it just gives you one less thing to worry about. You know, you just point it to any IP address that you've assigned from the pool of uh, IPs that you have. And uh, yeah, you should give you the NDE landing page. Yeah. Now here's the all important licensing screen in the background now. Um, yeah. You have to make sure that you are somebody that can actually accept these licenses. <laughs> and it asks you that as well. Uh, and the, the both uh, EULAs from NetApp and the VMware with regards to this. But I mean, it's, it's quite self-explanatory. I, I like the fact that you can either join or create a new vCenter, yeah. vC domain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you got that flexibility yes. of uh, starting from scratch in a new new environment, all join in an existing, you mm -hmm. know, virtual uh, infrastructure. Yeah, I'm, I've mentioned in um, in a blog post I did alongside this that um, it's won me over to using six five and with six five using the VCSA. Yeah, uh, I was uh, being a bit more old school was still quite quite drawn, shall we say, to using the the Windows client, the fat client. To, yes. to access it, um, yeah. I yeah. thought the VCSA when it first came out was a bit mm, clunky, which you know it was. Um, but um, with working with the HCI platform, it has won me over. Um, yeah, um, I, I was the same. Quite, uh, quite a big fan, or was a big fan of the uh, the C sharp client, full fat client on on your desktop laptop. Uh, but having had to use the web client to administer the environment, it's uh, yeah, I've got used to it. So we're just adding in some credentials here. Uh, for our um, environment, the management pod that we created. Um, this standardizes on the passwords used throughout, which is a godsend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's only one password to remember, rather than six or seven or, or, or even more. Yeah, we can see there it's, uh, it's verifying, or wants you to verify you've got at least two compute nodes and four storage nodes, which is... Uh, the minimum amount of uh, nodes you can have uh, to start with. We were actually quite fortunate. We've got four storage and four compute, which uh, is really nice. Yeah, and unless you pick that minimum config, you might be able to see the continue button doesn't come up. You can see as well, it tells you the slot um, as to where they are in the environment, um, yeah. which is it helps you identify what blades in case you've got multiple types, you might have some 300s, 500s, or 700s. Yeah. So it gives you that ability to, to decide what you want to do. Yeah. I believe in our, in our uh, from memory, in our chassis, you can see behind uh, behind Rory there, um, <laughs> we have two chassis. We have our uh, compute nodes at the top of each chassis and the storage at the bottom of each, each chassis. Um, they are in a specific lettered slot as opposed to numbered. I can't remember what the slots are. Let's see there. Computes Someone. at the top in yeah. B and D, and the storage is in A and, and C. C. Fantastic. In the bottom. Excellent. Like you set that one up nicely. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Just so, from from a networking point of view, what have uh, they got? So we've yeah. opted for um, the Arista brand. The Arista brand, and, and as I say, very good to work with. Very easy to uh, to use and to configure. A lot of documentation out there on the uh, 
on the interweb mm -hmm. around configuration that you need. Um, yeah, not being a, a great, greatly experienced with uh, configuring switches, uh, I found them quite straightforward to, uh, to, to set up. Good. So, you join us now and we're looking at the networking setup side of things. Um, the moment it's in the basic configuration window yeah. and one of the, the tricks that, that um, has been passed down to us from those on high inside NetApp Solid Fire is that uh, it's good to fill out the basic settings first of all yeah. uh, and then it'll use those figures to populate a lot of the fields over in the advanced setting which we're, we're going to head over to in a minute. Um, I am quite fat fingered so um, it did take me quite a few attempts to fill out some of these windows. These are the, the settings here, um, and you can see now since we filled it all in, again, the continue buttons come up, but we're gonna flip over to the advanced, which it warns you about, kind of. And then, boom, you're in, and you can see it's filled in a lot of the, the IP addressing and, and things in here. Yeah. Now this gives you a bit more granularity if you need to set up things like VLANs, if you want to move things around, if you want to which is what we wanted to do. Um, yeah. We've got all of that in here, and it, it does just mean that you, you've got better control over what you want to do when you deploy it. Yeah. I don't know if you can see in the background there, as as we've been chatting, the uh, the green ticks have gone through each individual box, uh, checked the entry of each box, and if it's correct, it's put a little green tick next to the box and coloured the box in green. If it's wrong, as we can see there, the default gateway, uh, just under the compute node networking, that needs to be changed, it's not quite right by the looks of it. One thing I did learn as well is that um, if you delete the last octet plus the decimal point, by putting in the decimal point again, it carries out the check, while if you just change yeah. the number, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah I this point saying about that so that's, actually, that's quite a neat thing it. to yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is the last screen before you go. Just, everything's got ticks. Here you can download a CSV file. Not a bad thing to do with that. No to be honest. I've got a copy of yeah. it. It shows yeah. you everything that's in there. Um, Look except the cool. passwords. Except the passwords. Which are blanked out. Or the yeah. And then copy that because your IP address is going to change during setup. And away you go. And this is the time to make a brew or... Get yourself a sandwich. Get yourself a sandwich. Yeah. Catch up in emails. Catch up in emails. Absolutely. Book a holiday. Book a flight home. <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do. Clear yeah, some snow, yeah. you know, there's, there's an endless amount of things you could do. <laughs> yes, we could have done with that a couple of days ago, clearing some snow. Yeah. Handy little button at the top, if you can't remember your vSphere IP address that you've just entered. All oh, right, okay, cool. So that was really painless, I have to say, to, to get to this stage. Yeah. Uh, my personal view, uh, having deployed various other converged infrastructures, I should say. Uh, so here you can see you've got both the SolidFire plugins installed here, the configuration and the management side of things, um, which is nice. That's done out of the box or during the deployment engine setup. Um, so what's the difference then, Rory, between the, the two so the configuration side is kind of the one-time setup things that you probably want to do, um, setting it up to configure to talk to the M node, the management node. It's a virtual okay. machine that's running on here as well. Yeah. Um, whilst configuration. The configuration is for staying, for looking at things like um, the way that the system is set up uh, yeah. for things like yeah. snapshots and stuff. And then here you can see how the actual box or cluster is set up. We can see the capacity that it's got. It's not much more than what we've done here. Yeah. Um, I think you, well, you need to run through with a keyboard and I suppose spending time going through with the, the spreadsheet, planning out what you're, yeah, you're going was, to do. I was beforehand. just going to say that the, the management domain that we have, we did spend uh, a reasonable amount of time making sure that that was perfect, that DHCP was correct, that DNS worked, we had time servers, NTP servers, uh, Active Directory was correct and it just made the whole process of running the deployment engine and deploying the whole of this infrastructure made it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my advice is make sure that if you have got a management uh, infrastructure or, or an existing infrastructure, make sure that that is nice and neat and correct. 
So over the time that I personally that I've worked on this infrastructure, mm -hmm. it's been really enjoyable working with it. I mean, it's, as I have, I've said it a few times, it's been pretty straightforward working with you know the whole of the kit. You know, yeah, getting the stuff together. You know, getting it in the rack, getting it cabled up. Uh, the configuration of the the HCI nodes, the storage and the uh, compute nodes, straightforward. Cool, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So, I would say your first available chance, order one, get one in, and start playing around with it. Order more than one, order many, <laughs> sell them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well there you have it. That's how easy it is to get set up and up and running with NetApp HCI. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we've got several more lined up and um, please stay tuned to see what they are. Thank you. Bye -bye.